Hey everybody, back with another daily update video. It is Wednesday, June 3rd. It's after hours, it's a little after 5 p.m. And just taking a quick look at the big board here, we can see that there's a lot of green on the board, but a lot of the tech stocks are either trading sideways, meaning they're up a little bit, down a little bit, but for the most part, they were sideways again today, just like they were yesterday. And if we look at the semiconductor sector, Intel, Nvidia, Qualcomm, they were all down. AMD was also down uh, a lot compared to the other stocks by 1.5%. Micron, uh, again, you know, the stocks I didn't get into, this one skyrocketed again today, up 4.5%. So, weird day in the market again today. Everything was just very sideways in general, especially in the tech sector. And if we just take a look at AMD, and taking a look at AMD, you can see we opened up the market right where we closed yesterday at about 53.60. And as soon as the market opened, within the first five minutes, you see it just dropped 60 cents and basically traded sideways all day, getting all the way down to 52.36. So basically dropped over a dollar, but it just hovered in the red all day long and actually closed in the red at 52.73. So if you remember from my prior videos, I have three puts on AMD right now. I have a 53, 52 and a $51 strike put. And so right now, my 53 put is in the money, but so far my 51 and 52s are safe. And I was just watching the market bounce and it looks like 52 is a pretty strong resistance just from what I saw today because it really struggled to get down to the low 52s. Um, it even closed at 52.73, which is still below my share price because I also bought 200 shares of AMD at a cost of $52.00. 95 cents each. So technically, I'm also losing money right now on my 200 shares of AMD. Not a lot, um, but actually, if you were to look at my overall portfolio right now, I'm actually neutral to, I think I'm up about 10 or so dollars overall when you look at my puts. And that's because my puts, because of time decay, are valued lower than when I sold them for. So actually, if I were to close out all of my positions, meaning buy back all of my puts and sell all my shares of AMD, I would actually still be profitable by about $10 or so, not accounting for any fees or anything like that. And that's because of the power of theta decay, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But you can see even after hours is trading sideways in the high 52s. I really need AMD to basically go up by like a dollar and then just trade sideways until Friday. I mean, a dollar is not much to ask because, you know, AMD is always plus or minus a dollar at least every day. So I'm really hoping for a green day tomorrow. Um, tomorrow the unemployment numbers come out because it's Thursday and for whatever reason even though the unemployment numbers are always bad the market always ends up green on Thursday I don't know if that's because j Powell and the Fed are you know turning the printer on on overdrive but historically for the past few weeks Thursdays have always been green days so I'm really hoping that AMD also has a green day tomorrow and goes up to like 53 54 and then just stays there until end of day Friday that way I can keep my put secure, just collect the premium and not get assigned any more shares. And then if I wanted to, I can sell off my AMD shares either Friday or maybe Monday. And the other reason I'm hoping for a green day is because one thing I wanted to do, because since I own 200 shares of AMD right now, I can sell two covered calls on AMD for this week, for this Friday. So what I was going to do was I could sell a $53 strike covered call which would, it's essentially my cost basis because I own them at 52.95, so it's only five cents away. So I could sell two covered calls right now for a premium of $68 each. And, you know, hopefully AMD gets above 53. I collect roughly $130 in premium and my stock gets called away and I'm fine with that because I made profit. Or I could try and hold the shares a little bit harder and maybe sell a 55 or $56 covered call for this Friday and just collect a little bit of premium because why not? And then if my shares do get called away, that's great because I'll collect a lot of money in stock appreciation because from 53 to 55 is $2 times 200 shares. So I would collect $400 in stock appreciation plus 16 times two or $32 in premium. So it's not really about the premium, it's more about the stock appreciation. So the reason why I'm hoping for a green day is because the higher the stock price gets to these higher strikes, the more value the premiums will be. 
So if we end up green tomorrow, like let's say the stock goes up to 54, well this $55 strike is gonna be worth like $60 or something like that, just because it's closer to the money. So a green day, I mean, this makes sense. This is kind of, you know, common sense, but the higher the share price goes tomorrow, the more money I will make this week because my puts will be secured. And then also I can get my shares called away by selling higher premium covered calls and then collect stock appreciation plus the premium for the cover call. So that's what I'm hoping for. And if you just wanted to see, so I have 51, 52, and 53 strike puts. So my 53, I sold it for a dollar eight. And right now, if I wanted to buy it back to close my position and not risk getting assigned any shares, I could buy it back for 96 cents. So I would profit uh, 12 cents or $12 from that trade. And that sounds weird, right? Because that's now in the money. So why am I still able to profit? And because that's the power of theta decay or time decay. So much time has passed in the two days now that I've owned that option that the premium has been eaten away just by time. So even though, and this is what I talked about in my other videos when, as far as the reason why I don't buy options, because even if the stock moves in the direction you want it to, if it doesn't do it quick enough, you will still lose money. So in theory, when I sold my $53 put to somebody, so somebody owns or somebody bought a $53 put and they bought it from me for $108. And so they were correct because I'm, I'm wrong right now. They were correct in that the stock went down. And even though they were correct, they're still losing money. So they paid $108 for it, but they could only sell it for $96, even though the stock did what they wanted to do. Even though they were correct, they were still losing money on the trade. So that's why I never buy options. Because on the flip side, even though I was wrong about the position, I'm making money still because of the power of time. So that's why I always say time is on your side. And you know I don't really understand why people would wanna fight against time because like I said you have to be right and you have to be right fast whereas on the sell side you can still be wrong and still make money like I'm showing you now I sold it for $67 and right now if I wanted to buy it back it'd only be $51 so I could profit $16 on this trade by closing it out right now as well and the 51 strike I bought it for $40 it's now only worth $24 so again, I could profit another $16 by closing this position out as well. So that's why the gains from my options right now would cancel out the minimal loss I have from owning the 200 shares of stock. And it would not only cancel it out, but I would still profit a few bucks, um, so still come out in the green. So that's the power of selling options. Um, and again, if we were to do the same analysis tomorrow, these numbers should go down even more tomorrow. Let's say the stock trades sideways and closes tomorrow at 52.73. These numbers are going to go down even lower. So again, I could close out my positions for even more profit if I wanted to tomorrow. But like I said, the best way for me to make the max money is for the stock price to go up. So I'm really rooting for AMD right now. And there's a lot of conflicting news out there right now. I mean, it's kind of funny because there's this website, investorplace.com. They just put out an article about AMD today at 7 a.m. And, you know, it's kind of a negative article because it says AMD stock continues to face tough threats. And it kind of talks about how, you know, AMD is not going to have a good year or whatever. And then the funny thing is later in the day, the same website written by a different author at 3 p.m. says why AMD will likely reward investors in the months ahead. So they talk about, you know, their shares and their valuation and, and blah, blah, blah. But I mean, this is why I really don't read any of this financial stuff because it's all just nonsense and it's just kind of, you know, for publicity or for um, views essentially. And I mean, people are just, you know, spinning the data and just, if they want AMD to go up, they're gonna pump it up. If they want AMD to go down, they're gonna talk about all the negative things about AMD. So I tend to avoid all this you know, news. It's just noise in my opinion. And like I said, I just stick to my, my guts and that's trade stocks you like and that you know about, you know what they do, you like the companies and stocks that you wouldn't mind holding long term. But so 
you know, the funny thing is, is that the other three trades that I didn't make this week are, you know, skyrocketing. If you look at Micron, it was up another four and a half percent today. So on the week, you know, I was thinking about selling some puts are in this level here at the bottom, and it just took off the past two days. So my puts, if I had sold them, would have been super secure, and I would have made some pretty easy money. But, you know, what are you gonna do? But yeah, I mean, Micron, you know, I think I like it right now, but I don't wanna get FOMO, and I don't wanna get in right now on the peak if everyone else is already in, and then get caught uh, if it comes back down to earth a little bit. And then same thing with Disney. Disney also kind of took off today. I mean, it opened up in the green and then it just, you know, slowly bled up and it closed almost 3% up on the day up at 122. You know, again, I kind of regret not getting a put on it a few days ago because I could have gotten a put for 0.4% return on my risk at like the 114 strike. Now, if I wanted a 0.4, I would have to get in at like 118, 119. So, you know, like I said, it is what it is. Hindsight's 2020. And then IWM, my other stock that I kind of like to watch, also just opened up in the green, rose a little bit more, and then traded sideways. I mean, it's crazy what the market is doing right now. Uh, if you remember from just a few weeks ago, we were talking about IWM in the 120s. Uh, and now it's in the 140s, you know, looking to get into the 150 range. But the other crazy thing is if you look at QQQ, which is the ETF that trades the NASDAQ 100, it is basically at its all-time high again it, it literally around the last hour of the trading day it literally touched the all-time high value and then bounced a little bit lower but all-time high is roughly like 236.98 let's say and today it went up to 236.40 that's where it closed but it did touch it i mean what's this peak here 237.37 there you go so it, it like got really really close touched it maybe got a little bit above it for a few seconds but that's scary in that we literally have a v-shaped recovery for the nasdaq 100 and that's kind of makes sense because the nasdaq 100 is made up of all the tech stocks that have been kind of keeping the market afloat but it'll be very interesting to see what happens the rest of the week because is the market going to allow us to get all-time highs in the middle of a recession in the middle of a pandemic and in the middle of riding it just doesn't make sense or is this going to be a really strong resistance and is the nasdaq 100 and the tech stocks you know is this the peak that's the fear that's that's the scary thing right now um and i'm really debating because amd is a tech stock do i really want to, do i want to try and cash out all of my positions this week meaning close some trades early sell off my shares or do i want to hold them over the weekend into monday because what if this is the peak and now everything's going to start going down so I don't know, food for thought, you have to make up the decision for yourself, but it is kind of scary and it'll be very interesting to see what happens tomorrow and Friday and especially how the market closes this weekend. I'll be very curious to see if QQQ can break above the all-time highs and create new all-time highs and stay there. That's the key. It's one thing if it just goes up during the middle of the day and then comes back down, but if it closes above all-time highs, that's going to be very interesting because then I think if the Qs do it, and maybe IWM and SPY are going to be next. So maybe we will have a V-shaped recovery. Although I don't think it's a real recovery because, you know, nothing about the economy and the stock market makes any sense right now. But that's just my opinion right now as far as the market. Obviously, none of this is financial advice. I'm not trying to pump any stocks or give you advice on what you should do or what you shouldn't do. This is just for entertainment purposes and just kind of I'm going through my thought process about, um, you know, how I trade or what I'm thinking about. But just ending the video with a quick look at the stock graph on AMD, you can see it hasn't had a lot of movement in the past few days. It's still trading between the 61.8 and the 78.6% Fibonacci levels between roughly $50.80 and $54.50. So it's kind of consolidating. You know, you might wonder if this is forming a triangle and that might signify that it's kind of has a lot of built up or pent up energy and is looking to make a big move which hopefully is to the upside so i'm really hoping it's kind of consolidating and then going to blast off uh, you know up into the this fibonacci level above 78.6 percent um that way i can secure some stock appreciation so that's kind of the thing i'm dealing with right now is do i want to try and sell off all of my positions and just uh 
make a little bit of profit but be 100% cash going into this weekend? Or do I want to hold my 200 shares, sell covered calls of them out of the money, and then just try and ride AMD up for a few bucks? Because a part of me doesn't want to miss a ride up like I did on IWM. Because if you remember, I had IWM at 127 and now it's in the 140s. So I don't want to miss a run up on AMD if right now it's trading in the low 50s and it goes up to high 50s or 60. I mean, AMD's all time high right now is roughly $59. So even if it wants to get up into the high 50s again, you know, I could collect a couple hundred dollars in stock appreciation very easily that way. So as always, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. If you have any suggestions for future videos or you know, just any feedback in general, if you like my videos, if they're too long, too short, if you know you want me to show other things like do you like that i'm showing some of the news articles that i come across or is it just a waste of time um yeah any feedback good or bad is always appreciated i just want to make this channel better i want to make it entertaining to watch and as always happy trading